Welcome to Mission Del Sol. We are so glad that you have joined us for worship today on our this Christmas morning, um, Christmas season morning. Today during worship, we will have our passing of the peace. We will do that as we've done in the past, where you're invited to stand and greet each other in person. If you're online, I encourage you to uh, pass the peace virtually by commenting on Facebook. If you are with us on Facebook, I encourage you to, or on YouTube, please uh, let us know that you're here by signing our virtual friendship pad or posting your name or comment in the comment section so that we know that you're here. We are so glad that we're all able to join together on this, uh, on this day. So let us be called to worship. The call to worship this morning is based on Psalm 136. Please join me. Praise the Lord, O my soul. We will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Gratitude is one of the easiest and most difficult calls to, li to live out in our faith life. Confident of God's grace and mercy, let us confess our sins to God and each other, first together and then in silence. Jesus, we thank you for your birth and your life in us. Thank you for the way you care for us and your creation. We are grateful. Yet the more we pay attention to the world, the more we see the brokenness as well as its beauty. Forgive us for our unwillingness to confess deeply for fear that your grace has limits. But you know our heart. You see what we do in secret. You hear our anxious thoughts and know our evil deeds. Forgive us. Lead us into the depths of our brokenness that we may experience the heights of your love. The mercy of God is abundant. It cannot be contained or saved for later. It is here for us right now. In God's mercy, we are washed clean. We are forgiven. We are set free in the love of Jesus Christ. We are loved forever. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. When we pass the peace for the first sign of joy on another's face, a wave, a smile, and a sign that God is in this place, let us share that peace with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you.
are giving glory to God today, and it is good to be with you all this morning. First, I'd like to start by thanking all of those who made our Christmas Eve services happen, all the children and families who worked on our family service, as well as the bell choir and choirs and all of our tech people, especially Martin, who stayed up all night long making sure that we could see Christmas Eve services on Christmas Day. So thank you all very much. Um, we are grateful for all of those who are watching online who are patient on Christmas Eve and did not get to see our 8 o'clock service. We hope that you enjoyed it on Christmas Day um, at some point. Or if not, then I encourage you to watch it at least for the beautiful music that the choir and bell choir put together. As we continue in worship, um, Remember, next week is Communion Sunday, so if you are watching from home, make sure you have your communion elements ready for our Communion Sunday. It also means that we are having our drive through next week. So we'll have our food collection, so if you haven't dropped off all of your items from our reverse advent calendar or just your regular offerings for the food collection for Guadalupe Food Drive, I encourage you to bring those next week or to the drive through next Sunday before and after worship. We're also getting ready to start a new social justice uh, book study. Um, each month we'll be reading a different book. So this month is Dear White Christians. So I encourage you to, watch, to read the book and then join us online on January 19th to discuss the book and where we can use um, what we've learned to use into our own community and our life together. There's a lot more things happening. I encourage you to read our Soundings newsletter or the Sunday newsletter and uh, connect with all that's happening. And now let us turn our attentions to our screen for our children's message. But one more message about the children's message. There's a really important piece that I'm going to talk about in our sermon in the children's message. So pay close attention. Hi, everybody. It's time for the children's message. Okay, so we are recording this on Christmas Eve, but um, it is for Sunday's service, which is December 27th, which is after Christmas. So we had to get a little creative because there's a lot of excitement going on in our house, as you guys can all imagine, right? Are you guys excited for Christmas? Yeah. Well, Definitely. I'm going to share my screen with you, and we're going to start by talking a little bit about one of our favorite family traditions, and um, that is in our family during Christmas we love to watch Christmas. So I added a couple of our favorites here. Um, these are movies that we've already watched. Maybe some of the people watching us may have watched these. So we watch these every year. Elf and the Santa Claus and of course Home Alone. Um, but when I was thinking about the children's message today, I wanted to think about the story of actually Christmas and the true meaning of Christmas. So I thought about another Christmas movie that we actually haven't seen yet this year. So maybe we can watch it later today. And that is the movie, Charlie Brown's Christmas. Do you guys remember that one? Yeah, um, that one's the best movie. Yeah, it's a really good one. Well, at the very beginning of Charlie Brown's Christmas, he's actually really sad. You see, he looks pretty sad in this picture. Yeah, he looks pretty yeah. sad. He does, yeah, he's not happy and he really wants to feel happy and he sees everyone around him enjoying themselves. But he's just really struggling and he can't figure out what is going on. He can't figure out why he's having a hard time finding that happiness. He likes the decorations, he likes the Christmas trees, he likes the gifts, but he's just really not feeling happy. So he actually decides and he goes to talk to his friend Lucy. Lucy's always up for giving advice. And so she he talks to her and he actually 
um, really shares like what is going on with him. And she says some really simple advice. And she thinks that he really needs to get involved in some real Christmas projects. Um, and I kind of thought about that because that's some of the things that we did this year. We got involved in some Christmas projects. We um, helped some families that were not able to have a Christmas maybe like we have. And we adopted them and shared some food and gifts with them. And so sometimes when you get involved in a project, it makes your heart grow and you kind of learn about it. So Lucy says, you should be the director of the Christmas play, Charlie Brown. And so he says, okay, I can do that. So on his way to figuring all that out, he comes across some other things though that are really confusing and he still is struggling. He's not happy yet. Um, one of the things he sees is that Snoopy is decorating his doghouse but he's decorating it to try to win money from a contest. And so he is really still confused. Look at Charlie Brown there. He's like, why, why is Christmas so commercialized and fancy? Why is it that he's just wanting money? And then he even um, shares about some people that he sees that are just asking for gifts. And he just keeps seeing people and um, his friends and family that are just showing off and just worrying about getting things. And he just still isn't feeling happy inside. And so he still hasn't found that true meaning of Christmas yet. So then he goes and he's trying to be the director of the play. And he's trying to get things organized and look what all of the kids are doing. What are they doing, Claire? What are they doing? They're, they're um, probably like playing music or something. Yeah, it looks like they're playing music. I see some dancing. Um, they are just kind of having a party. And Charlie Brown is like, okay, guys, I am trying to be a director here. And he still is so confused. He says, I still don't understand what is going on. So he decides to go off. And he's going to say, I know, I know the true meaning of Christmas. If I look for a Christmas tree, I'm going to find the true meaning of Christmas. Well, when he gets there, he, he has some more problems. He's really having a hard, hard time here. He finds that in the whole place, he can't find the kind of tree he wants. They're fake. And he really wants a real tree. He has something certain in mind. And he, this is what he comes up with. And, and look, he starts to find a little smile on his face, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. But he's, he's still not there yet. He still is trying to figure out what to do, okay? And he brings the Christmas tree back to the play. And it does not go over well. However, this little clip of the movie, he's able to figure out the true meaning of Christmas. Shall we watch it? Yeah. You've been dumb before, Charlie Brown, but this time you really did it. <laughs> what a treat! <laughs> I guess you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men.
That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. All right, so, so he tells the story of what Christmas is all about, which is, which is the birth of Jesus. And if you remember, the angels come and they sing and the shepherds go to see him. And really what we have to do is pause and think about that, that true meaning of Christmas and to give thanks. And we're so grateful that Jesus came. And so he starts now to realize the true meaning of Christmas. And, um, he comes, he comes and at this point in the story, in the movie, he actually, he realizes it, but he is still alone and he still is struggling a little bit. And he puts his, he takes his tree with him and he puts it up and he, and he realizes the true meaning. But because of the story that was shared and the reminder all of his friends come and join in and they help him decorate his Christmas tree. And um, the message of joy that the, that the angels give about Jesus. And that really is what brings people together. It's what brought his friends together. And they are all able to realize the true meaning of Christmas as well. And they all look pretty happy there, don't you guys think? Yeah, they look really happy right there. Yes, and look at his big smile. So I think when you're able to find that true meaning of Christmas in your heart and forget about all those fancy things and gifts and making sure everything's done the right way and it's seen the right way from the outside, we look inside to our hearts to find what the true meaning is and we find that joy and we're able to spread it around. So what do you show or how do you show gratitude towards Christmas during this Christmas season or all year long. So it is special to celebrate right now, but are there things that you guys do to show that gratitude during the year as well? Um, you can like give to those people who are in need, not just because it's the time of giving, but because you know that they need something. That's true, yes. Yeah. Claire? Um. Like, you it. Do you need a minute to think about it? Yeah. Colby, did you have an idea? Yeah. Spending time with your friends and family. Mm -hmm. And really, that is such an amazing part, which can be a little difficult right now, as we know in our family. You know, we have family that can't travel right now and is far away. So we have to be creative with all the ways that we can spend with them. Um, and share that love and tell them how much we care about them, even if we're not with them. Claire, did you think of something? Mm -hmm. Giving okay. gifts to your friends and family. Mm -hmm. And we can do that all the time, right? We can, don't, it doesn't just have to be during Christmas time. We can, we can give to others. Or like Lucy said, get involved in some projects. And that really will help us remember what's truly in our hearts. Um, I wanted to show you how happy they were. This is just a quick little seeing at the end when they all come together and they realize that um, Jesus is in their hearts and they're able to really remember that true meaning of Christmas. Our God and time especially because we're recording this on Christmas Eve so get excited and um, have fun at Christmas and then always remind yourselves to come back to that true meaning of Christmas and show that gratitude for the season and for what's come so shall we pray together yes 
Okay. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. Remind us to start our days with grateful hearts. Remind us, Remind us to start our days with kindness. Spread our light and happiness to everyone around. Spread our light and happiness to everyone around. Amen. Amen. Bye. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. The scripture reading this morning is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. Listen to these familiar words. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Let us join together in prayer. O oh God of light and life, guide us on this path forward. Lead us so that we might hear the word you have for each of us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It has only been a few days since Christmas, and I am still there, thinking about Mary and the angel who came to see her, her now husband Joseph who found his way to Mary, a pregnant virgin, that trip they had to Bethlehem, a very full inn, and a baby who laid his head in a manger instead of a crib. And then there were those shepherds in a field watching their flock, which is where we come to our text today. Now the main job of a shepherd is to watch their sheep and make sure they stay safe. They were also supposed to make sure they had food and water to drink, but you know, sheep weren't really that smart. They like to wander off and do their own thing all the time. Maybe a little bit like us thinking that we know all the things and where they're supposed to be. But the shepherd's main job and hardest job was in the dark. The, she the sheep, they had to keep the sheep safe and protected because sometimes other animals thought the sheep might be really good dinner. And so the shepherd was supposed to make sure that they were safe and sound. Most of the time we think of quiet at night, but they sat up in the desert in the dark, waiting and watching to make sure that nothing bad would happen. 
the dark was time to be extra aware because that's when those animals like to sneak into the shepherd's area and just sneak off with one of the best sheep. The darkness was not a time to rest. It was a time to be vigilant. It was a time to pay attention to what was going on. Which is why when a bunch of angels showed up, whether they were friendly like our angels from our children's play, or as scary as the angels described in Isaiah with six wings and six arms and were singing praises to God so loud your ears can barely hear them, the angels were terrified. I would be terrified. Wouldn't you be terrified? Fear and darkness always seem to go hand in hand, don't they? So darkness is often shorthand for the things that scare us, either because we don't want to be a part of it or we don't want to find out what would happen if we were a part of it. You know, like that spot in a scary movie when you say, don't go through that door. Almost everyone is afraid of being afraid. And beyond that, we all have our own lists. Some have those reptiles like snakes and spiders. Some have big things like job loss or what to do with their kids or school or COVID or what's under their bed or in their closet at night. And we could go on with a long list of things that we could, are all scared of. And I'm sure each one of us would have a different list. And we all have strategies for staying out of those dark places, don't we? These shepherds spent much of their working hours in the dark, and so what scared them was this bright light of angels and a star in the sky. And the message of the angels was simple, wasn't it? Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord, and they start singing this glorious praise to God because exactly what God had promised is about to happen. They were so thankful because a baby was finally born and God would save the people and he would bring everyone into his light. And they couldn't stop singing and giving praise. Now, we come back to the children's message. Did anybody notice Linus's quote was from our scripture text today? He stood on the stage and he told Charlie Brown that he knew the meaning of Christmas and he quoted the same, same words that the angels shared with the shepherds that David read in our text today. But there was something else that was a little bit more tricky that happened in that video today. Did anybody else see it? I took me until this year, and I've watched that movie every year at Christmas time, to notice something special happened too. So if you notice, all of the main characters have their main like outfits that they wear. Everyone knows what they have on, right? You always see Charlie Brown with his, his zigzag yellow and black shirt on, right? And Linus always has his blanket with him. But when he started reading or saying his lines from the Christmas play, what happened? He put his blanket down. Now, they've been trying for years in the Charlie Brown comic strips to get Linus to put his blanket down. He won't put it down to play baseball. He won't put it down to go to school. He takes that security blanket with him everywhere. So you have to know that, that security, putting that security blanket down had to be something important. I have to believe the Charles Schultz, the creator of the Peanuts, meant for us to notice that when he shared the message of the angels, giving praise to God, that he did not need to be afraid anymore. He didn't need that blanket. Jesus was there. And I wonder if this is the same message we have today, that we don't need to be afraid anymore because... Jesus is here. The angels basically said, you don't have to take my word for it. I have signs. There's proof that Jesus is coming. The first one that he says is there will be a baby wrapped in the swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And that message was for the shepherds. 
And when they went to the manger, they saw exactly what they had described. The second one was from Mary and Joseph, said that the shepherds came and told them about these angels who sang and, ordered and honored their baby. And the text says that Mary treasured these things in her heart. And I like to think that that is Mary's way of being grateful, of recognizing that all the scandal and all this stuff that happened in these last few nine months of her life was exactly as God expected it to be. When we talk about being about gratitude, we talk about naming those things that show up in our lives that we're grateful for. Things that we're able to set down that security blanket and just give thanks to God that he showed up. Some of them are small, like clean clothes or food to eat, and some of them are big. Signs in our world, in our wilderness, that will change our world forever. And these are the ever-present light in our darkness. Psychologists say that the reason why gratitude is so important is that it's the one thing that helps us set down that security blanket, like Linus. It takes away our fears. It says that God is shining lights in the darkness so much that we no longer are afraid of that darkness. So I asked on Facebook, one of the most reliable sources of information today, what you are thankful for at Christmas. And here is the list that, that we came up with. Being home together, our church community, Zoom, uh, family, food and shelter, talents, livelihood, blue skies, friends who check in, generous people who care, a healthy body, lovely memories, love, people who are calm and patient in the chaos and uncertainty, people committed to the attitude of hope and compassion, family that care about us, our pets, and knowing that God is beside us. So my question for those who are here in person or those online, I encourage you to post your, your questions. What else can we add to our list? This is participatory. I came up with my list. You come up with yours. What else can we list? Good health. Clean house? No, good health. Good health. That's a good one. And a clean house would be nice, too. <laughs> I could be grateful for that. What else? I heard too many things at the same time. Bobby, what did you say? Peace. Peace. Rain. Rain. That's a good one. What else? Healthcare workers. Healthcare workers. I know that didn't make it on the list, but it should be. Healthcare workers definitely should be on the list. Teachers. Teachers. New pastors. <laughs> New pastors. <laughs> and vaccines. Thank you very much. And, you know, we could go on. If we sat here for a long enough time, or if I told you in advance that this was going to be a, a test, I'm sure you would have all come with your your long list of things you could be grateful for this Christmas. But as we come to an end of the year on Friday, I thought it'd also be good for us to reflect on what we are grateful for this year. So we could include all of the things we named that we're grateful for this Christmas, but as you look back at all of 2020, all 360 some odd days, so far. What are you grateful for? COVID. <laughs> you haven't gotten COVID. Technology. Survived COVID. <laughs> Technology. Memories. memories. Being able to hold on to memories. Being able to help people. Being able to help people. Well, here's some of the ones that I came up with for the church is 
our 2020 vision campaign, all the money that we've collected so far to pay off the debt of the sanctuary. I think that's been a huge, huge project. The mission participation that we've had, including our mission, uh, our Navajo packing project we just completed, uh, our virtual services with, and Smith who got us all up and running. Yay, Smith. Community. What? And me, I came in 2020. I mean, it should be the best year ever, right? Uh, phone calls and the ways we've all connected even though we've been far apart from each other. Uh, somehow we've, re we've been able to stay, c stay connected as one. All of our drive-throughs, some of those have been some of the great times of connecting with folks and feeling connected even though we're all staying home in our own houses. What else? I mean, being able to work from home. Yes, that's a great gift too. Any others? Families. Families. Yes, They've been, being able to be together. It's a it's a really good thing. And I'm sure, again, I'm sure there's some lists on our Facebook page too. So I encourage you all to go on and watch. We've had a lot of great things that have happened in 2020. A lot of things that have made us see God's light in a new way. And these moments of gratitude are just like when Linus puts down his blanket, when the angels stand and sing alleluias and the shepherds make their way to a baby lying in a manger. And when we focus on these gifts, we're able to live into God's light. So I invite you to hold on to the light of God's life by singing hallelujahs, by shouting from the rooftops, because our Savior is born. And there's a lot of great things that keep happening this year. So let us uh, join together in spending these last few days of 2020 full of gratitude. Let us join together with our saints who come before us, saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, and he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, you feel the need to clap, jump right in. Yeah. 
attention to prayer, uh, here are the prayer requests that have come in this week. Prayers for Edie, George Vronsky's sister, who's having medical tests. Prayers for Pam Banning, who's made the difficult decision to quit her job and move back to Tennessee to take care of her dad. Dwayne will be moving in the next few months. A, a friend of Flory Welty's who is struggling with substance abuse. And those who have COVID or who are recovering from COVID, Hunter and Harrison, the Graham 17-year-old neighbors. Meredith, John, Garrison, and Torrenson, the Almond's daughter and family. Ruth, Renee, Christiana, and Savannah, Jan McConaughey's extended family. And for the deaths of Larry Corbett, who is our former interim pastor, and John Eden, Cynthia Giroux's dad, who have passed away in this last week. Also continued prayers for John Christie as he recovers from shingles, for Tyler, the McKenna's nephew who has leukemia, and Albert, Sally Christie's son, who's grieving the death of his longtime partner. And we have a couple of, a special joy from George Fronsky, whose grandson had brain surgery earlier this month, and George said it was special to see Ronan run around enjoying Christmas with his family, as he never had before the surgery. So God, give, we give thanks to God for that. So let us go to God in prayer today. Today we join the heavenly choir, choir singing your hallelujahs. We shout it from the mountaintops and we give you thanks and praise, O Lord, for this child lying in a manger. We gather with the shepherds, the wise ones, the animals, and the community, and we kneel in awe that you chose to be with us, to be here, to be among us right here, right now. Lord, we thank you for Christmas, for full bellies and places to rest our heads, for Zoom phone calls and cards that keep us connected across distances. Thank you for walking through tough situations for us. And thank you for giving us strength today. Lord, thank you for being with those who are in need of your love and care for Edie and Pam and Flory's friend and for Hunter and Harrison and Meredith, John and Garrison and Torrenson, for Ruth and Renee and Christiana and Savannah who all need your loving care, your support, your healing mercies, and your strength. Be with those that are in need of your continued support especially for those in need, of, um, in need of your healing mercies, especially prayers for John and Tyler as they continue to battle their struggles. Lord, you are the one who is with us through all the hard things, for bringing us that perfectly timed phone call, the doctor who figured out what was wrong, the vaccine right when we needed it, and the comforting care of your presence when we grieve the people we love, especially during the holidays. Be with Larry and John's families. Be especially with Cynthia and give them the strength and energy and wisdom to know how um, to be, to know exactly what to do in this odd season of grieving. Uh, Lord, be with Albert as well. Lord, you know all that they are going through, and you know exactly what they need, and most of all, we know that you stay with them. Lord, hold their tears, support their, give them support when they need it, and remind us of the gift of love you choose to give us, the healing hands and the blessings that we are called to give on your behalf. Touch our hearts and spirits as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We thank God for the gift of Jesus' birth today. We use our gifts of time, talents, and financial resources as signs and symbols of our gratitude. Thank you for sharing all that you have with each other. Join me in giving online giving uh, webpage found in the link or the UR code, QR code. Take time to think about the talents and time you can share with our community and the world.
Jesus, thank you. Thank you for you. Use our very selves and these gifts for your glory and purpose. Amen. As we leave this place, you all know how to exit because you've been here before, so I don't need to tell you, right? I th that's exactly what I thought. As we leave this place, we leave in gratitude and in grace filled with the knowledge that Jesus came for you and that there's a lot to be grateful for in these last days of this year. So let's spend our week being grateful for what we have and what God will bring in 2021. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you. May the love of God the Father surround you and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.